we all know that there's kind of a running joke in Arizona that everybody here is from someplace else. In fact, when I first came to Arizona in 1996, it took me more than a month before I met a native, you know, somebody who was born and raised here in Arizona. And whether you've been here for 17 years like myself or maybe just 17 days, chances are when you got here, you had never heard of the term valley fever. If somebody were to ask you, what's valley fever? I mean, your initial reaction might be, uh, heat exhaustion or, oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Kind of like gold fever, since everybody here is from someplace else and they all want to be here, they've got the valley fever. And you'd be wrong. It's actually a fungus that has a spore that blows up in the air, you breathe it in, and that fungus starts to grow on your lungs. Gross. And a little bit scary because the Center for Disease Control just came out and said that from 1998 to 2011, the cases of valley fever in this country, primarily in California and Arizona, spiked 850%. Now, doctors call valley fever the great masquerader, and they call it that because it can present itself in a whole bunch of different ways. You may have symptoms that are similar to the flu, pneumonia, bronchitis, mono, and they're testing you for all that kind of stuff, not knowing that it was a spore that's growing in your lungs that's making you sick. And valley fever will go away on its own in most cases. About 1% will lead to surgery or, or even death, but that's in rare, rare cases. But it is a concern here in Phoenix because A, it's dry, it's windy, we have dust storms. So what can you do to protect yourself against it? Well. If your job takes you to places like a construction site, you know what, wear one of those masks on windy days so you're not inhaling all that dust because that's where we find out we're seeing a spike in cases or in those construction type of zones. The other thing though is you could just simply be walking your dog past a vacant lot and the wind kicks up and it hits you in the face and you breathe it in and ta-da. I had a friend in college who had valley fever and at 22 he couldn't sleep laying down in the bed. He had to sleep in a recliner because his lungs would fill up with liquid. They told him the treatment for it was an antifungal medication that would cost him about $1,000 a month. And who can afford that, let alone a broke college student? Almost had to move home because of it, but eventually his body healed and he did get better. But while they were testing him for all of this, his family and he was told that he had leukemia. Yeah, a little bit of a tough thing to stomach when in all reality it was valley fever and a simple blood test could have figured it out for him. I'm sharing this all with you because you need to be responsible for your own well-being. So take this information, file it away in the back of your mind because you never know when the dry, dusty winds of Phoenix will blow into your life.